Does anyone like paying taxes, separating from their hard-earned salary and giving it to the others? The mitzvot of tumot and ma'asot are the income tax and national insurance of Torah society, a tax that is a privilege. Yet, it involves a significant amount, which in certain years comes to more than 20% of the total crops that grew in the field. Did you get that? More than one-fifth of everything that grew in that year goes to konim, levim, and the poor. This mitzvah requires a strong faith in God to provide for all our needs. It is with good reason that the Torah promises specifically for this mitzvah, tithe so you will become rich, and please test me with this. There have always been tax evaders, also in the field of tumot and masrot. Over the generations, not all Jews withstood this test. Some used various tricks to exempt themselves from the mitzvah. One possibility was bringing the produce indoors through the window. At a later period, this situation sparked a social divide. As the Rambam describes it, in the age of Yohanan the high priest, following Shimon HaTzadik, the great court sent emissaries who searched throughout the territory of Israel. They discovered that everyone was meticulous with regard to separating Tumag Dola, but with regard to Maaser Rishon, Maaser Sheni, and Maaser Ani, the common folk were lax and would not separate it painful realization that a major segment of the population did not observe the mitzvah of separating tumot and masrot led the sages to take drastic action. They established an exclusive club. Every club member was called Chavir. Who could belong to the club? It was not so simple. Only those who were meticulous about separating tumot and masrot could be club members. They would have to commit to only eat at the homes of other members. The word of non-members was doubted. Even if they claimed that they separated tumot and masrot, members would not take their word for it. They would avoid eating the produce and would separate tumot and masrot themselves. This created a complex social situation, besides the tension within communities due to different social statuses. The Mishnah describes the challenge even within families, such as when a non-member mother-in-law is suspected by her son-in-law that she switched the food he gave her for untithed food. Becoming a member was not easy and it entailed adhering to strict rules. Acceptance to the club entailed making declarations before three members and demonstrating one seriousness. Members would commit to avoid eating in non-members' homes and to strictly observe the rules of ritual purity. Whoever was caught breaking the membership code lost the privilege of ever rejoining as a chavel. Each member was charged not only to look out for himself, he also had to ensure that others would not stumble in eating untithed produce. The sages state, it is presumed that a chavel does not allow produce that is not ritually prepared to leave his possession. That is, it was certain that the member would make sure that no one would stumble because of him, so there would never be untithed produce even in his own home. Even when a member did business with non-members, he would need to ensure that they would not transgress because of him. Even if this meant he would need to separate the ma'asot himself, and this was not his halachic responsibility. Produce sold or given out by non-members was not treated in the same way as produce that was definitely untithed. This is because some non-members did tithe, or at least they separated the Tumag Dula, which was viewed as more severe, since the punishment of Eden was death in the hands of heaven. For example, whoever bought a batch of Dmai produce, and later bought another batch, could not separate Tumot and Masrot from one batch to exempt the other. This is because it was possible that the first batch might be tithe, while the second batch was not, and vice versa. There were special situations when the sages permitted eating Dmai produce. For example, when someone had Dmai produce on Shabbat and cannot eat them, on Shabbat it is forbidden to tithe. In this case, it was possible to rely on a non-member who claimed that the produce was tithe. This is because even common folk would not lie on Shabbat since the awe of Shabbat was upon them. Is this tithe? A special unifying event took place three times a year during the Shalosh Regalim when everyone made the pilgrimage to Jerusalem. The excitement due to the holiness of the event 
elevated everyone to the level of members, chavarim. Thus the sages extrapolate from the verse, Jerusalem built up a city knit together, that it is a city that makes all Jews members, chavarim. During the time of exile, the issue of Tumot and Masot was not relevant. So too, the laws of membership became null over time. That is why today we suffice with a Kashrut supervisor attesting that the produce is tight. However, the Chazonish maintains that the laws of Udmai apply today as well. For this reason, some of his followers continue to tithe all types of produce that they buy in stores and in the market, even if the place has Kashrut supervision. These are the basic halachic and historical principles on which Masechet Dmai is based. Now that you internalize these principles, you can study Masechet Dmai and fully understand it.